How's it going? My name is Mark Jordan. I'm a community pharmacist, a columnist, and sometimes you'll find me on Instagram absolutely blathering. And today's one of those days I was asked on by MS Ireland to do a bit of blathering over here. So you'll catch me over on Instagram on Mark Jordan Pharmacist. If there's anything I didn't cover here or you need more help with, just give me a shout and I'd be glad to help. What are we talking about? We're talking about the vaccine, talking about our road out of this dreaded pandemic that we're in. And one of the ways that we're going to get out of it is certainly through the use of a vaccine. So I apologise at the outset for my uh, technical skills. We're operating on a shoestring budget here and unfortunately my mic has let me down today. So we're using the microphone. If I'm doing a bit of blathering or a bit of shouting, I apologise in advance. Okay, so the vaccine. What is, what is it? How does it work? What can we expect from it? Vaccine, right, the, the front runners at least are using a thing called RNA. RNA is really, really interesting. It's a cousin or a sister even. It's very closely related to DNA. Humans have it. Small bacterial cells have it. Uh, amoeba have it. And viruses have it. And what does it do? It's genetic code. So just like you have characteristics. I have brown hair and green eyes. We use genetic code or our cells rather use genetic code to figure out what, what those characteristics are that you should have. And viruses are absolutely no different. And in the case of COVID-19, it has spikes on its outside. And these spikes are called P-glycoproteins. They're used like a lock and key to gain access into our cell and cause infection. And we don't like that. So what do we do? Back in January, they sequenced all of the genetic material in relation to COVID-19 using some fancy but very trusted science that's been around for a good while. And they figured out which part of the genetic code char characterises for all of these character traits that are specific to COVID-19 because it's those specific character traits that allow us to develop a vaccine because that's how our immune system recognises the infection. We'll get to that bit in a minute, right? So we figured out which parts of the genetic sequence to snip and then we decided we needed to be able to shuckle it to our cells so that we could elicit that all-important immune response. Okay, so how do we do that? We load them up onto buses, just like we're going on tours of the Cliffs of Moher. We've got two types of buses when we're talking about vaccines. We have lipid nanoparticles and we have vector vaccines or adenoviruses in the case of those vector vaccines, right? So adenoviruses sound a little bit kind of scary because that's when people start thinking, uh-oh, there's a virus involved in the vaccine for the virus. That can't be too good. But it's grand because we've actually given the adenovirus the SNP. It's a non-replicative uh, vector vaccine, which means once the virus is given to you, which carries the genetic material in its insides, in its innards, it cannot replicate. All it can do is meet your cell, gain access into the cell, deliver its package, and away we go. We've got a vaccine that works, okay, or hopefully. Now, in the case of the adenovirus itself, when it's out in the wild and acting um in its, in its capacity that it generally acts, it all it does is cause the sniffles. So we wouldn't be too worried about it anyway. But in this case, it's been uh, damaged to the point where it cannot do anything like that. So the lipid nanoparticle then is really similar in the way it acts. It's a shuttle. It drives the genetic material to our cells and it delivers it to the cells so that the cell can do what it needs to do with that genetic material. But what is a lipid nanoparticle? All it is, is some oil droplets long story short, some fancy oil droplets that create a kind of a membrane and we can shove our RNA package into the middle of it. So, right, just to recap, RNA is similar to DNA, except it only has one strand and most living organisms either have both or one or the other. And in the case of COVID-19, it has RNA, right? It codes for characteristics of the virus or whatever organism uh, we're talking about, in this case, the virus. And in particular, we're interested in the RNA that codes for the characteristic that is the P-glycoprotein or the spike on the outside of it that it uses as the lock and key to get into the cell. Okay, so... We have our RNA and we have our carriers or our shuttles, the lipid nanoparticle and the damaged or the snipped adenovirus. What happens then? We inject it in, it lands at the cell, or it bumps into the cell and it gains access into the cell. What is it delivering? It's delivering that RNA. And what happens then? Well, our cell machinery, as complex as we are, reads that genetic code and figures out that they should be making a protein if they're to follow that code. So away it goes, our busy cells start making proteins and we start projecting these proteins on the outside of our cells. And that sounds a little bit kind of far-fetched, but what it, what it, all it is, is that these proteins start projecting outside of the cell. And our inquisitive but police-worthy T-cells and other um, immune cells start spotting these foreign proteins and they go, they're not human proteins. They don't look uh, like anything we've seen before. So they bind onto them and they learn when they bind onto them, when they disintegrate these proteins and start to change them and spit them out and 
they're cleared through your kidneys and your liver and your urine and your feces and everything your body is learning from that and that's exactly what that vaccine is it's amazing science it's absolutely so technical but it's so simple on the face of it that our t cells and b cells and all of our lymphocytes and all of our amazing immune cells learn the more they see these proteins the more they learn so once they've learned then if you unfortunately come into contact with a covid virus your body will know hey We've seen these P glycoproteins before. We understand. We saw the vaccine. We know how to latch on to those P glycoproteins because they're foreign bodies. And we'll just dismantle it, break it down, clear it from the body and prevent infection from occurring. So, right, that's me. Mark Jordan is my name. Mark Jordan Farms is over on Instagram. I'm delighted to have had the opportunity to speak to everybody today. Sorry again about my microphone. And I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Have a great one.